Hello. Good afternoon, everyone, since uh, it's the afternoon. Thank you for being here. I'm very glad to share this moment with you. Like, it's the 20th anniversary of Blender, and it fits with my 40th anniversary, so it's a very big moment for me. And after um, learning Blender for 10 years without producing anything, I finally came up with this that um, is the end of a long process. Um, so this is an independent project. There isn't any structure, no financial um, program, um, but it has been made with the collaboration of uh, three persons. There is um, me, I do the modeling and the anatomy part. Then a Polish guy that I've never met in physical world, but um, he made the whole script, which is about 1,000 lines. And then the Unity developer that made an app from it. Um, as you will see, there are now two visualizers of anatomy. One is inside Blender, and the other one is an app that now is available for PC, Windows 10, will be adapted to other OS probably soon. Um, I don't have this thing to change the idea, so maybe next one. OK, this is just uh, to explain the main context why this kind of uh, application or, well, hack can be useful. Because there are other 3D anatomy software around, some are free, but for the moment, none is open source. And if you think of it, it's a bit strange, the situation, because there is in every country a budget that is dedicated to education. It pays for the building, it pays for the teacher's salaries, it pays for many things, but it doesn't produce any, nearly any material uh, learning tool, like for the books, the softwares, uh, especially in scientific edition, like the articles, if you know somebody that makes research, he will explain it if you don't know. And so the solution um, would be, obviously, to encourage the public services and the schools to promote and use and share um, open source solutions. Uh, next year, please. OK. The, all the content that is shared. Oh, thank you. So that's the next. OK. All the content that is shared here is uh, CCBYSA because this was the license under which the original anatomic files were shared. Um, these are drawings that I was doing when I was employed as an illustrator, medical illustrator for a company in Montpellier, south of France. And so, as you see, there are um, pictures of the animal and the human. So during three years, I've done two years the dog, um, osteology, arthrology, myology, and so on, then the nasal cavity, oral cavity. All this to say that as a medical illustrator, what you need to produce an image is basically to copy something else. It can be from several sources. It can be from a picture of a cadaver. It can be using medical um, uh, imaging device. Or it can be using 3D, which actually is the best so solution because you can then tweak the lights and make your shot in the exact angle as you want and have much control about it. Um, so these are the files that were shared on the internet uh, for 10 years now. I think the tree in, on the back, they are what I would call the first model of this Japanese organism that's called Body Parts 3D. So most of what I share is their work, actually. Um, the other one that is in front, the two uh, characters in front are the same second model. And it has some parts that are missing in the other one, like the facial muscles, but it doesn't have the vessels, and there were missing parts that I completed afterwards. So if you download the file, then you unzip it, and you get something like this. So not only is it separated, but all the names are only numbers. If you want to know which part is which name, then you have to go to another file. And actually, it's just very complicated. So some university had tried before to make something like uh, more usable of it, but uh, Nothing really usable has been produced so far. So there has been a major release of, in both anatomy and in uh, 3D 
of course, the 2.8 version because the collection system is super useful for very complex systems like the anatomy. But also the re-edition of the official lexicon of anatomical structures, which is about uh, 7,000 and so uh, names in Latin and English. Um, but in this version, they avoid the pro proper nouns, like the, each anatomist would put his name on each structure, and then it becomes like very complicated to know which is what, what when the same anatomist put the same structure, uh, the same name in the head and in the foot. And so all this together, and because I had been learning Blender for 10 years, made me think, OK, that's the moment to do something open source. So I gathered everything inside the file. I combined the two models and completed. So this is the ligaments, what we call arthrology, studying the joints. The nerves also were missing, and adapting everything to fit the two models together, segmenting the skin because there are regions that have each one a specific name. And so I started to have something usable inside Blender. Then the first thing, because the meshes are super heavy in, on the original files, so that um, there were three techniques. Of course, remeshing, but then all the vessels were uh, converted into curves, nerves, arteries, and veins, which makes, which, which makes it much more editable and light. And then it's instancing mirroring all the symmetrical parts, which like lowers, divides the weight by two, basically. So after that, adding colors, of course, and thanks to Eevee, we can now use, because the, the purpose was not only to have a tool of production, but to make these files available to anyone, and also to non-Blender users. So this challenge to make Blender easy for everyone is probably what took the most time. So now we had colors, and um, we could navigate instantly thanks to Eevee. So making a user-friendly anatomy visualizer, I cannot code, so I was a bit stuck with this and the solution to try to hack Blender and make a kind of software out of it. So as I told you, the collection system is super useful because you can store the different body parts either by type, like a muscle, for example, which is already done through the layers, which is super useful. But then you could also make collections like the thorax or the uh, right uh, down um, uh, lower limb, and so on and so forth. Um, also, in order to provide a very easy system for a non-Blender user to take pictures and export, um, is well, probably most an image, but can, can be done also for animations, with a viewport render and this setup, the user can control all the parameters only with one mesh object that is empty. So he scales it, and it drives the orthographic scale. And then he just has three buttons to know, and he can export an image. It could be made even um, faster, maybe, because now you have to push 0, F12 to render, and uh, F3 to save. Maybe we could just make one shortcut, and anybody could push it and save the, the file directly. This is important. Um, Probably many of you have already struggled with the fact that uh, what is render is not what you see, and I want it very bad that what you see is what you get at the render because uh, it has to be kept very simple so that I only have one icon in the lexicon, which is the eye, and it drives also what you get on the render. The three main issues, um, because, of course, as they told me on a, a forum, Blender is not a showroom, it's not, a, not made for everybody, where, well, probably mainly the lights. If you use um, the isolate function with Shift H or the local view, then you get the lights that go off. And I wanted to use the render viewport shading all the time or most of the time. And so this was very annoying, and all these have been solution uh, result with a uh, Python script. So this is the part when um, Marcin Zielinski comes in and he starts writing the uh, first small part of solution, then another one, and we ended up with uh, more than 1,000 of lines. It's a complete add-on, but I really think that it ought to be separated in many several add-ons because it could solve 
problems for the people in, well, just a part of it. The hide children is about hiding a parent object and having all the family disappearing. And this is really necessary for what we'll do. And the labels, because um, in architecture, they've got this add-on that's very useful that's called Measure It. But actually, I need it to be able to search for a label and to select it, because it will display a definition later on. So this system has been made possible through the Python script, too. But basically, it's a text object. So that, that's the structure of a, a label. You've got the parent object, the label, and the line. This is like just the line that um, is connected between the label and the object to point all the time to the same place. It is hooked so that you can move the label. And you also see that there's a transla translation. Excuse me, I should drink. Um, so the idea for translation is that you keep the English name in the mesh, and the, the object in itself gets the, transla the translation. Thank you very much. And also, of course, the line mustn't be selectable so that you would on only select either the object or the label, but the line is something just like for visual information. It gives something like this. So each of the label is in the 3D space. You can turn around, and the script makes it follow the viewport, uh, which is good, because otherwise you can only see it on one point of view. The white color has been chosen because it's visible, but as you will see, we have a system to make key colors so that there could be in the future like um, different colors for the planes, the crests, and so on. Uh, this is the sphenoid bone, by the way, uh, which is inside the head, like between here. It's my favorite bone. It's super beautiful. I encourage you to study this one. It's a, a real pleasure. Uh, so I told you about the TA2, that is the official lexicon of anatomical structure. And so this is the new edition that was released in the 2019. And so it is shared as a locked PDF, which is a pain in the neck because you can read it, but you can't touch it. Like, you cannot just download it and get a spreadsheet. So we had to reverse engineer. Uh, then after, we wanted to translate it. So you now have uh, the French that I corrected the Spanish that has been corrected by Carlos Torres, and the Portuguese corrected by Ana Bigio. Thanks to them very much, because it's a, quite a long work. There are 7,000 structures that have uh, like awful names with uh, many <laughs> anatomical details. So here it is. And these are the synonyms. It means that not in Blender, but in the app, you can search for a structure on based on the, the, lead, the, the former name or, well, the synonyms, and it will find it. This is how it happens when it uh, is important in Blender, so that you get this kind of CSV file that's a, a text, basically se separated by point comma. Um, and the Python script makes it like uh, select the first, second, or third uh, according to the language. Um, this is to show that when you select any object and that there is a text object that has the same name as the mesh, well, uh, basically as the English uh, term, then automatically the text gets displayed so that it gives you the definition. The definition are taken mostly from Wikipedia because there are many of them. and. As you will see in the app, it goes to the next level because it uses hypertext, but I'll explain that later. And this is to show the um, two main functions about material, so that as I had worked for two years as uh, an illustrator, I wanted to give the option to, and I like very much the cell shader, to give the option to export an illustration-like uh, render and also to have key colors, because in anatomy, the whole point is to differentiate and identify things so that it's very good to have like these systems of colors. 
And so you see that you can like, mix both of them very easily with a shortcut or a, just a checkbox in the add-on. This is the um, uh, cell shader. I call it comic shader. Yeah, comic, yeah. And these spots, red, are the muscular insertion. These were missing also in the, in the original file. And it's always studied when uh, somebody studies uh, osteology, then myology. There's always a link where each muscle is attached to the bone. Uh, the brain also is worth mentioning that um, it has been replaced by another brain, while well, the neocortex. So this one is very detailed. You've got every little part with the definition, and it's really interesting to go mm, navigating into it because you learn many things. So this is to give other example. Uh, you can see the skin. That's uh, quite a nice one. It's uh, well from the two models. This was the the best one, and so you can each time in one shortcut pass from the, well, organic coloring to the key colors. So this is to speak about the cross-section tool. Um, Eduardo, that explained the architect thing, uh, mentioned the Blender Beam. And actually, it is inspired by a tool of the Blender Beam add-on that we reproduce it for anatomy. And basically, it uses three materials for one. And based on the position of a plane, it will become transparent so that you can make a cross-section, move it very easily. And also, from this point of view, it's not very visible, but there's a third material that's displayed on the inner uh, surface of the planes so that it gives the impression that it's plain. You, you don't see inside the mesh, but you just see a full white color so that it looks like a, well, a cross-section through something uh, solid. And these are the filters. In this place, it looks a bit complicated. It has been simplified in the app, but so that you can filter which collection is uh, hidden or not. And it can be very handy for somebody trying to make a special shot of anatomy. And you can also move things and keyframes. So Blender is so versatile that you can have much fun with this now. Uh, this is to exemplify. Be at the beginning, I had used a lot the collection system because it's a linear hierarchy. I added extra collection for, well, to make it uh, easy. But then to be importable inside Unity, you need parenthood relationships. So that I did it all again. And I wanted also to be able to select a group. And a collection is a thing you can select all inside the collection, but it needs a special shortcut. But now each group is a text object. You can select one, and it will automatically, automatically select all the children. So, well, you, you should try and use it to, to understand, but it makes the whole thing. You can toggle on and off these group labels so that if you want to have a lexicon, not like uh, the outliner, but to have it in the 3D space, you can use this option. And they are, of course, also translated. This is to show, well, just to give all the shortcuts to the functions that are use, useful for the non-Blender user that wants to use only the anatomical uh, visualizer. He has all, the, well, all these that are like default. The orange framed ones are the ones that have been added. And it's worth mentioning the Control shift h It isolates an object, but only hides the object of the same layer, which makes it possible, for example, you have the bones, you have the muscles, you want these muscles to be visible, but not the other, but to keep the bones, then you can do it. Well, it's a three-button shortcut, but uh, it's super useful when you need it. And the same for revealing only the layer, then the language, and so on. Let's see if it works. Yeah, cool. So this is the tutorial. It's two minutes. Uh, there is a presentation and a tutorial. This is the tutorial, so you will see exactly how it works when you're inside, what you can do, where, where to press. It was meant to be the way for a non-Blender user to approach the thing and to say, OK, well, I can manage. So for the people here, I guess that these shortcuts are already known.
There used to be a kind of uh, heavy metal music, but I took it off because it's a scientific middle. <laughs> I tried to keep it down. <laughs> the other video, the presentation has got uh, some, some uh, music. Um, just taking advantage of this time to say that there is still work on the anatomical level. The, um, there is space for improvement everywhere, but I think that the main steps have been done to, to go on building on it. And for somebody studying anatomy, it's, it can be really fun, really satisfying, because even the proprietary software, I think there are tools here that they don't have, and all this thanks to Blender and the good mix of things. Yeah, so this is a um, custom shortcut. Instead of Shift G to select the collection, um, you just press uh, right click, you immediately get the whole list. Um, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Store view, this is a um, feature that I think might be integrated default because it's um, something you have to uh, add on. I don't know exactly how it works, but uh, uh, no, thanks to the script, the <laughs> this is default Blender. This is uh, a feature that um, only works with um, the solid viewport shading. And the planes of cross-section, they are constrained so that we could have it totally free and it works very well. But just to keep it simple, once again, I just put the three planes. And actually, there is a setup that might be developed further. It's to have a, a cube. And you can see only inside the cube or outside the cube. And it works very well, only that I have five planes and not the sixth one working. I don't know exactly why. If somebody wants to, to finish it, it's welcome. And here you can't, but in Unity, it also makes the objects that are hidden selectable, uh, unselectable, so that you can select through the cross-section to the object that's below. Well, this part is not really needed for anatomists, but uh, why not? And so the materials are a whole setup where I started learning no trees through materials. And um, it allows to do many things. If you just have the right Python script with a property, then you can trigger whatever you want inside the material. Um, OK, enjoy. <laughs> Um, so these are renders that you can make in, well, three buttons now uh, from the, the blend file. Um, yes, just to, no, sorry, just to mention that um, there may be, well, I try to do it with freestyle, but there may be um, a thing to do with line art because I think that if we constrain the line art towards the viewport or to constrain the camera to the viewport, I don't know, in a way or another, to have the option to add line art, because in this way it would, well, I like it like this, but it would be an interesting option. So, well, as I told you, the idea is to really ship a full solution for somebody that wants to use it. And so there are two main uh, like solutions to be able to recover the same configuration on another computer by, well, something sent by internet. And it's a, the template which allows you to open the Atlas, have all the shortcuts, the configuration working, and it's like optional. You have it uh, 
uh, running on the side of your regular Blender and switch from one to the other. And only for Windows, it, you can get the portable version that you can even have it on a USB key and you don't need to install it. You can run it immediately. It works like a charm. Um, well, I think that's something that makes it uh, like enjoyable, like just to have your keys, a uh, USB key, you can watch anatomy on any computer. So to share it, I needed to build a website. So this is the one that came out lately. If you want to download the file, they are on the Atlas page. The about gives more information about the context, history, and so on. Uh, and forum for, uh, well, it's a bit inactive, but uh, I hope that you will come and join. Um, and the social network that's um, more active, it's uh, LinkedIn. So the presentation with music. I don't know this girl, by the way, it's an open source video. Just to mention the part where it's moving, it has been separated into a different file, which has some interest. I encourage the animators that want to, well, dive into human biomechanics to go and look into it. It's not totally finished, but the reason why it has been separated is because um, to import the, the hierarchy in Unity, you need to have parenthood relationships, which doesn't mix with uh, the parenting that you need for the rig, so that's, it has to be separated. Uh, this is to explain all the elements that comes in action. So the NBDC, actually it's the logo for Body Parts 3D, which is the model that I've used. TA2 is the lexicon, uh, Wikipedia for definition, Python script that makes the whole add-on. Um, all this inside Blender, which has a really well-chosen name for this occasion. And, well, I changed the logo because I wanted to have a logo. And nobody likes it, but I don't care. Well, we'll try to find another one, maybe. Um, then, well, Unity and the app. This presentation is about the Blender part, but just to mention, there is the Blend, like template, portable, or just the file, if you prefer. But then there is the app that's now released, and you can download it on the website. All is open source, same license. So this is the user interface of the app. Uh, it's very enjoyable when you struggle to try and configure Blender into an anatomy visualizer to have the possibility to make everything. It has been a very intense communication with this uh, Spanish developer, Luis Vinant, and he's really to thank because he has had much patience because I'm very like, um, control freak was the expression, I guess. Um, well, I invite you very much to try it because I'm very proud of his work and what we've done together. Um, as you see, there are sliders on the side so that you can display the each uh, system from deep to superficial and have still all the, the control, the other controls. This is well, a picture of what you can get easily, like in a few clicks. And as I mentioned, the blue words in the definition are hypertext, 
so that when you select it, it appears in the outliner, in the 3D view, and you get the definition, and you can go jumping from one place to the other very easily. Um, yeah, sorry, and just there's the hierarchy, horizontal hierarchy on the upper part. So you can select anything from anywhere, and it's uh, super handy. This is to mention that uh, a university from Holland in Leiden, they asked for a grant to continue this project, and I think it's a very good thing because it needs many people to verify and to make sure to like, give credit that the thing has been reviewed by other people and that uh, you can reckon on it. And so it's one grant for four universities, so it's the same thing. I hope there will be other. I've been contacted by uh, one in Lyon, one Open Anatomy in the United States, but for the moment, only this one is running. And I don't know exactly what they do, because actually I think they prefer to work like uh, on their own, and they will only re release the modified version probably at the end, so within two years. So we'll see what happens in between. And this is to say that it's a, a project that's too big for one person. I've been like working really hard for nearly two years, but um, I mean, I can do a little bit more, but I'm unemployed and uh, I wouldn't care if other people would like take it. And actually, if I could only do the anatomy and the 3D modeling, I would already be super happy. So there is space for, for all these kind of disciplines. Um, for example, Wikipedia needs a huge work to actualize, update all the, the definitions because they use the former um, lexicon. Uh, that's it. Um, so you've got mentioned Marcin Zelinsky that did a whole add-on thanks to him, and I hope that somebody will take the time to separate each little part to make separate add-on because I think it's very useful for Blender. Then thanks to Luis Vinant for the app that's amazing and for the translation. And if somebody wants to give time to translate or has a friend in medical field or whatsoever to translate in Dutch or in German, any language is welcome. We've tried Hindi and Arabic. It works. There are some hacks to do because it's a different uh, uh, font. But uh, it can be done, no problem. So, well, now it's just uh, working on it, and I hope to... It's not meant to be my project. Actually, it's uh, your project. It's the project for everybody. And please enjoy it.